to Darren Urban from azcardinals.com. A couple quick things. Uh, how do you kind of see your fit in this backfield? Obviously, living in town, I'm guessing you know a little bit about what they have here. And also, was there any point uh, over the weekend where you were thinking, you know, should I have come out given how late you were going in the draft? Did you ever doubt yourself at all there? Uh, I think – I think I will be used as a type of guy that Chase was used uh, the, the previous years, um, just kind of as a, as a rotational guy, just a guy who's going to be called and gets whatever needs to be done, done. Um, and so um, that's as far as I know about that. I'm just going in, head down, and just working um, to earn my right um, and to uh, be able to get on that field. Um, do I think back about my decision as far as coming out? Um, no, sir. Um, at the end of the day, um, I, I understand that football is one day going to be over. Um, and knowing a guy as far as my uh, shelf life um, at my position, I know it doesn't last long. Um, and however, uh, however long football lasts me, hopefully next 10, 15 years, um, I have a degree in my back pocket. Um, and I'm, really, I'm willing to step out there um, and I'll be ready to conquer the real world. Hey, you know, it's Josh Weinfuss with ESPN. You have your, your brand, your shirt, your website. Where did that entre entrepreneurial spirit come from, and what do you hope to do with it one day in the long run? Uh, really, that's something that I got my degree in. Um, I'm not necessarily what I want to go into, um, whether it's marketing, um, uh, finance, accounting, stuff like that. And so um, I've always been into those classes. Those things kind of got my interest. Um, and so just I knew when I had this whole opportunity, um, knowing that you have the moment, you got to seize it. Um, and so kind of just trying to put out as much content um, as I can. Um, just knowing that um, over the years, I'm going to look back and be happy that I did it. You know, most rookies get a chance to acclimate to the NFL and with the offseason work and see the speed of the NFL players. What kind of challenge will it be if there is no offseason and basically the first time you're on the field is in training camp? Really, I'm um, just using this time now um, to stay ready. Um, at Arizona State, we had a thing um, and that we always used to say is stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Um, and so those are one of those things I'm making sure I'm still working out, getting my runs in, conditioning and all that stuff to making uh, to when that day comes, being ready for that day. Next three questions will be Catherine Fitzgerald, Darren Urban and Richard Sines. Hey, you know, kind of related to that, just with the virtual meetings and the playbook install, what's your learning style like when it comes to football? I'm the type of guy, I feel like I just got to get it and I'm, I'm able to look at it, study and be able to put things together. I'm um, in order to ask very uh, real questions. I'm um, in order to get the answer that I'm looking for. Um, so I, I feel like I'm one of those guys who's a visual learner. Um, so I have no problem using this uh, virtual thing that we've gotten now um, to learn the playbook. Um, and join meetings as well. You, uh, you had mentioned uh, after you got drafted that you had done some workouts with Chase before. Being in town, how much connection did you have with Chase in particular and with other NFL players uh, being close enough that some of them live around here? Uh, yes, yeah, sir. Uh, just uh, when I was preparing for my pro day, uh, Manny Wilkins was able to call up a few friends that he knows, um, including Christian Kirk, Chase Edmonds and other guys um, from the team. And so we were able to go out there, just get some reps with them, um, introduce myself, get to know them, um, not knowing um, that this time would come. Yeah, um, you know, having said that, uh, how, how prepared do you feel you are, maybe ahead of the game you feel you are because of the relationships you've, you've already developed with some of the Cardinals players and then from the program you came with, came from that has NFL experience coaching-wise from guys like Herm and Antonio Pierce and so on? Uh, yes, sir. I feel like um, just even uh, Arizona State has prepared me well for the transition. Um, and like you said, I think just going out there and knowing the guys, um, how they work and go about their business and just kind of seeing that, um, knowing that is what it's going to take and what is going to have to be done um, at the next level um, is kind of an um, exciting thing to see. Next couple questions, Josh Weinfuss and Catherine Fitzgerald. Hey, you know, kind of off of what you, you were just asked, where did Herm and Marvin Lewis help you the most in preparing for the, the NFL? What did they tell you? What did they teach you? Really, um, I would just say just how we went about every day, um, the way he treated not just me, but all the players in the facility. Um, Herm was a guy, he wasn't much of a rural guy. He just had expectations. 
Um, and he lets you sort of free reign um, around those boundaries as long as you don't cross it. Um, so knowing uh, then when you cross it, there will be consequences. Um, and so it, it was kind of those things is where captains led the team um, and the coaches didn't say much, uh, but you did have those small conversations. You had your leader groups um, that would go meet with Herm every once in a while, kind of structure things as how as far as the team looks and what do we want to accomplish. And so those are things that I'm looking forward to the next level, just being able to have the, uh, the free reign to move um, about um, and be accountable for your own actions. You know, how much have you talked to either some of the other guys on the Cardinals in this draft class or around the league about how this has just been such a unique year for you guys, both with now like looking ahead to the next step? Yeah, um, I think just in general, um, the draft itself was a new experience, um, <clears throat> obviously, for all of us. Um, so just throwing this new thing that we're dealing with um, kind of made it that much more nerve wracking. Um, guys that I work out with um, here um, in Texas during the uh, uh, training, um, Jeff Okuda, th these are guys that I talked to um, countless a number of times. Um, and just uh, the, the thoughts that we have are kind of all the same. Next couple questions would be Richard Sines, Scott Bordeaux, followed up by Darren Urban. All right, you know, yeah, now that you've had a couple of days to kind of, you know, catch your breath, what's your excitement level like now that you've gotten over you know, the anxiety of the draft and, and, and dropping in the draft and then figuring out that now you're coming to a Cardinal team that's very offensive friendly? What's your excitement level like and what's going through your mind now? I'm still ecstatic. Um, I think it's not necessarily where you go in the draft, um, but who you go to. Um, and so I think I've landed um, at the spot where um, I think I could help this team um, be successful in the future. Ian, you're a Scott Bordeaux from The Athletic. Good to see you again. Um, the Danny and Tomlinson obviously has been a mentor to you in some ways, especially kind of teaching you the spin move. Have you guys talked at all about what lies ahead and what advice he might have given you? I'm um, just really just being able to stay focused and keep your head down. Um, there's a lot of distractions and temptations that come at this point. Um, just but being um, able to remember to keep the main thing, the main thing um, as you move forward in your career. Cliff uh, Kingsbury likes to talk about how they keep drafting guys that he recruited in college and that turned him down. What was it like uh, when you actually got a chance to have a conversation with him? Is, is that weird at all talking to a coach that you you didn't want to go to play for in college and now he's your, your pro coach? Not really. Um, Cause I think I'm a guy who's all about relationships. Um, and so I, I don't, I don't burn those. Um, so there's a lot of coaches that I felt like um, I didn't go to the school, but I had really good relationships with those coaches that I still um, from time to time reach out or they reach out to me uh, wishing me the best of luck. Um, and so um, he's one of those guys. Um, and just the fact now that, like you're saying, um, he was the guy that recruited me and now he's um, able to come back and get me um, in, the, in the league is something uh, phenomenal for sure. Next would be Catherine Fitzgerald, followed by Josh Weinfuss and Richard Sines. Hey, obviously Cliff has had a season to adapt his game to the NFL, but what do you make of just kind of what he did in college and what that'll be like for you coming into this system? They scored a lot of points. Um, just looked at what Pat Mahomes did in that offense, um, kind of bring it over to the league, the spread um, style of it. Um, and I, I feel like I, I feel very comfortable in that. I've done that in um, high school. I've done that in college. And so I feel like um, once I get the opportunity to step uh, on the field, I'll fit right in. What's the backstory for the two sounds of the most hated slogan? And then how do you think your NFL platform can help you on the business side of, of your career? Uh, two songs most hated um, came from a tweet um, uh, coming from Texas. Um, I knew about the rivalry, um, but I never knew exactly what it was about. Um, and my freshman year here at Arizona State, when we played them, I didn't get too much into it. I wasn't really playing. And so um, I never really understood what the, the rivalry meant. Um, so my second year playing there, um, there was a lot of engagement going on, trash talking. So that's when I kind of I found out what it felt like for that rivalry. And it, it kind of just fueled me. And so going into my um, this past season, a, a tweet that I put out was, um, I think it was like I'm randomly thinking um, thoughts um, that, go, or that are going through my head um, as I want to be one of the most hated men in Tucson. Um, and so uh, everyone just kind of ran off with that. We kind of ran off with that. And that's kind of how the story of Tucson's most hated came about. Well, you know, you must be, you know, Tucson's most hated, but you're really loved by Cliff Kingsbury. I mean, let's go back to him recruiting you. He tried to get you, you, you juked him, you got away from him, but then 
he gets you again, and this time it's not really your choice, but he picks you. Just what goes through your mind when you realize this guy must really like your game and really want you to be on his team? Yep, yes, sir. Um, that goes back to the relationship that I was talking about. Um, it's kind of um, a, a, a static uh, a feeling of knowing that, okay, this relationship paid off um, down the road um, of keeping in touch and stuff like that. Um, I feel like um, it's going to pay a, a huge, tremendous part um, into what's going on, just knowing um, that he was able to come back and recruit me. Um, and even though after I, 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 I perhaps turned him down, you should say. Final three questions, and we'll wrap it up. Michelle Gardner, Jess Root, Catherine Fitzgerald. You know, what have you been doing? I'm assuming you're back in Texas, and how have you been working out, and, and what have you been doing to stay in shape? Um, yes, I, I've been running a lot. Um, uh, I've been doing that. I've, I've also had the opportunity to work out at my high school. Um, they've um, opened the access um, uh, to the weight room to me, um, and so I've been able to get some work done there. Hey, you know, Jess Root from CardsWire.com. Obviously, it's something a lot of rookies have to do, but what mindset or what adjustment do you have to make to go from offensive workhorse that you were at Arizona State to have a new lot of thing on special teams, probably what you'll be doing as a rookie? Um, yes, sir. Um, I think it's just willing to do whatever it takes to win um, and succeed. Uh, and when I was in high school, I was never the first guy. I was never, I had to work my way up. Uh, when I got to college, I was not the first guy. I had to work my way up. Um, and so it's just that same mentality. Um, you, you start off at, at the bottom and you work your way to the top and it's the cycle that never ends and you've got to keep working. Now that you are playing for a team that plays for the whole state, do you still want to be Tucson's most hated or are you trying to like reel in some of those people now? That was a question um, that went through my head. That was something I thought about, uh, but um, I haven't given too much thought about that because um, you know I am faithful to uh, my school, but uh, just knowing uh, what else uh, I'm going to have to take um, just to let them back in my life um, and just me back in their life as well. As, um, so we're going to see. Um, but for right now, um, I think we're going to stay um, sideline. We need to uh, sideline them for sure.